Hey, I'm Lily from Marino y Vino, and I thought this summer I would do some more YouTube videos. Right now I'm spinning some yarn. Uh, you just can't see it as I go. I thought it would be fun to spin and talk about what's been going on. Um, so the end of the school year uh, happened two weeks ago now, and it was it was good, uh, but there's uh, the adenovirus going around Flagstaff right now, pretty much anyone who has kids or um, teaches has gotten it. So I'm on week three. It you know includes a little bit of red eyes and congestion, which you can still hear, and um, quite a bit of congestion actually. So so I thought I heard my daughter. Hopefully she doesn't come in. Um, anyhow, after school ended, since we had an unprecedented amount of snow. We um, teachers had to make up the snow days, unfortunately. So um, I did reading apprenticeship, which was really good, um, which just includes reading strategies that help students engage more with the text and think more critically. So um, that was really good, um, even though I wish I didn't have to be at school. And then after that was the Flag Wool and Fiber Festival. So right now, Arizona only has one fiber festival and that's flag wool, and so it's really convenient that I moved up here, although I think I would have moved from, um, or not moved, <laughs> but uh, visited from Tucson just to go to it. Um, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot vendors, demonstrations, classes, um, and so it's just, it's wonderful. Um, I have a lot of fun every time. Um, initially, I, I went when I moved up here, because why not? Oh, and there's animals. How do I forget the animals? Um, and I took my well, I guess the first year I didn't have my daughter, not the first year of the festival, but the first year that I went. And so um, that was enjoyable because I could just do what I wanted. Um, and then since I just moved to Flagstaff, I decided to volunteer for the festival because um, I wanted to make like knitting and crochet friends, although I didn't crochet at the time. And so I volunteered for the festival for three years. Um, and while I was doing that, I met Andrea, who um, is one of the um, leads, I suppose, for the festival. She um, she and Sarah do most of the work, um, and Leslie. And Andrea um, dyes yarn, and she told me, like, oh, it's really easy. Just, you know, start with Kool-Aid. And I was like, okay, I don't believe you. <laughs> but um, it kind of stuck in my head until 2020, and I bought some Kool-Aid. And for the spring break of 2020, I was like, you know what, I'll give this a shot. And that was after I heard we our spring break was gonna be two weeks instead of one because of COVID. And so I thought, okay, like, you know, I'll see you know, what I think about this. And I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I just enjoyed it a lot. And um, that's kind of when my business started, um, Merino Evino, because I enjoyed, I thought it was so much fun. And I still find dyeing yarn really fun because I can't draw, but um, I do enjoy colors, so. So anyhow, so flag wool was a blast. Um, this year I didn't have to uh, volunteer and help, which was nice, although I did miss like that aspect of it because um, I was able to stay in my booth and meet people and talk about knitting and crochet and spinning and see where people were from. So it was really enjoyable. Um, and of course, it's always nice to hear people say they love your yarn <laughs> um, because I only sell online right now. And I think, although like that's a wonderful way to sell um, products, with yarn, it's really nice to touch it. And it's hard to know how soft the yarn really is if you're not in person. So it's just nice to meet people in person. And um, I'm a Wafa vendor. So if you knit or crochet or anything, it's um, the wool and fiber arts on Facebook and uh, it's just a it's a huge community actually there's 15,000 people and so I met two people from Wafa in person which is really cool and I think most people live in Michigan um, so um, so it was really nice to meet them and then I got re in, in touch with a fiber mill and a famous um, knitwear designer um, Tressa and also um, Cactus Hill Farm. And so I am looking forward to making my own um, like 100% American yarn um, this year or next year because I am big enough now where I can afford to 
branch out and do those things. So that was a lot of fun and really exhilarating um, because believe it or not, I'm introverted. And so networking and talking about my products in person is a little, it makes me shy. <laughs> so, um, and I talked a lot about spinning, which was cool. And a lot of people are interested in learning more details about spinning. Um, how do you do it? How do you pick the fiber? You know, what draw do you use? And it really depends. I mean, right now I'm sitting down and spinning. Um, but uh, usually I actually spin standing up, which probably the veteran spinners would be like, what? Blast me. But uh, I think it's fun. Um, also with my kids, my son loves to help spin the wheel, which is okay, but he can uh, uh, move things around and I don't think my spin quality is as good, but especially at, towards the end of the school year, there's something about spinning that I find very, very relaxing and stress relieving. And so being able to spin for just, I mean, I've been spinning for six minutes now. Um, so yeah, just like even one minute at a time or 10 minutes at a time is, is really relaxing for me. And that's not to say knitting isn't, I mean, I'm constantly knitting. So um, that's another thing <clears throat> is I was dyeing up tons of new colorways for the Fiber Festival and I wasn't updating my Etsy store. So as soon as I get off this video, um, I'm going to take pictures of the new yarn and try to update as many listings as I can because I was just dyeing a ton. Um, and we have new merchandise. So as you guys know, I'm a teacher and my friend Jessie is also a teacher and she designed the shirts that say Never Not Knitting and um, then our friend Janet, who's also an English teacher, like English Teachers Unite, <laughs> um, she made them. And so we have some extras from the festival. So I'll put those on Etsy. And then I'm going to start a Printify shop where you can buy merchandise um, from Merino Ibino um, on like shirts, bags, stuff like that. And um, for the festival, we only had it um, the shirt that said never not knitting because I always have my knitting on me and I think a lot of um, a lot of crafters do they always have a project on them because you never know when you're going to be able to start crafting like during passing periods at school I would be knitting during the festival I was knitting um, of course you know watching TV at night during bath time um, and then tomorrow's knit in public day so I also need to do the laundry today so I can get my new um, never not knitting shirt out for National Knit and Public Day. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to have merchandise and I think this next year or two will be pretty exciting um, with the growth for my business. So um, fingers crossed that it does grow because I enjoy meeting people and talking about yarn, working with yarn, etc. Um, and I think the festival really helps with that. Next year, it seems like there's going to be two new festivals or this year um there's going to be one in sierra vista this september which i think i'm going to i haven't actually applied yet um and it looks like there's going to be one in the verity valley next year in april i'm not sure if that one's going to get off the ground quite so soon because it is a lot of work you know you think like these fiber festivals oh you know you just have the vendors apply have some teachers apply and you reserve a space it's a lot more work than that <laughs> Um, reaching out to people and getting grants and the space and working with people, finding the teachers, uh, making sure everyone has what they need. So it's a, it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot as a vendor too, but you know, <laughs> I don't have to worry about so many moving parts. So it does take a full year um, to plan and prep it. And that's with four volunteers because at the Flagwell and Fiber Festival, everyone's volunteer. Um, so I think starting a festival from scratch and having it ready in a year is rather ambitious. Um, but of course, if they do it, I would love to go. Um, so I would definitely apply. Um, but anyhow, the only other update I have is um, going back to Never Not Knitting is tomorrow is Knit in Public Day. And uh, my friend Shana from Yumi Yarns, whom I've never met in person, but one day, one day we'll make that change. Um, she lives, I think, in South Dakota, and she just had a baby. I feel like it was just yesterday, but it was six months ago now. Um, so maybe we'll go out to visit her sooner because then she would come out to Arizona because uh, it's hard to travel with little ones, and my kids are 
both good at traveling. Um, but yeah, she's a great um, designer. She designs for knitting and crochet, which is pretty cool. Um, and I think she does something with software for her day job. But uh, she has this really fun idea, which you can catch on Instagram, or you can go to her website, Yumi Yarns, Y-U-M-I Yarns, um, where you get clues throughout the day tomorrow for National Knit and Public Day, and you just bring your knitting. And so, uh, of course, I bought the pattern, and I'm excited to wake up tomorrow and see what I'll be making, uh, because I'm just about done knitting um, the Crazy Sock Ladies DK weight vanilla socks for my friend Kat. Um, I do have a lot of ends to weave in, but uh, hopefully I'll get that done tonight. Other than that, I just need to kick up one mini skein. So Shana's pattern, I don't know much. I don't know more than anyone else. Um, but when you buy the pattern, they give you, I pause the spinning. You could probably hear my new wheel. It needs to be tuned up. Um, but uh, it, she tells you kind of what you need. Actually, I do need to kick up two things. You need one full skein of yarn. So I went stash diving, which I wish were more athletic than how it sounds. And I I know I'm gonna knit with black yarn. It's my only black. It's Black Pearl from Dream and Color uh, yarn and it's smooshy cashmere, so that'll be nice. But since it's knitting in public, we'll be outside and so the light will be really good. I also am curious, like, is it really that hard to knit with dark colors or black? So let me know in the comments. So this is gonna be my main yarn. And then I'm sure, you know, most of you guys are makers here, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, but you have um, partial skeins left over from projects. So, um, so do I, and these are actually all my yarns. So this is going, I know this isn't a mini skein. You need five minis for this project, um, but this is Miss Georgiana Darcy. And um, initially when I was making uh, the minis for my, um, Pride and Prejudice surprise box. I was dyeing up full skeins and then making the mini skeins myself, which was a lot of work. So if you're a new indie dyer out there watching, don't do that, just buy the mini skeins pre-made. But anyhow, as I was um, making this, um, there's either some kind of mistake in here or the yarn broke something. So I'm going to use it. So I thought this would go well with the black. And then I have this one which is a variegated Jillian's burgundy so it has some navy and yellow and of course mostly burgundy and I thought that was really pretty kind of a jewel tone to or jewel tones to go with the black um this is uh Jillian's burgundy just the plain and you can see I think you can see the sparkle in it I thought it would be fun to add sparkle if you've never knit with or crocheted with sparkle it's actually not itchy and this is why I like being in person is you can put it on your neck. It's the neck test to see how soft it is and you really can't feel the sparkle at all. It looks itchy, but it's not. Um, and then I had leftover Katie's Green because Shana did a year of socks where it was 12, pair, 12 patterns for different socks in a year. And I was one of the indie dyers for, I think this is my colorway. I don't remember which color I dyed for it, but um, I did knit a pair of socks for that, I'm um, using this, and this is also a sparkle. I thought the green would be nice. And then um, I was dyeing Charlotte Lucas, and I got, um, I didn't clean out my dye pot as well, so I have some brown instead of just the speckles. So I need to cake this up and the black up, and then I'll be ready to go tomorrow. I'll have to pick out my project bag. I'm a project bag person instead of, um, I don't know. What other people do there's so many different ways to hold your yarn on projects but yeah so i'm excited for knit in public day i'll be taking pictures of where i'm knitting and progress of the pattern i'm hoping to finish that pretty soon i'm hoping it's maybe a day project depending on you know how long i can knit in one day um because we'll be visiting portland next week to see my brother-in-law and um there's a dress I wanna knit for my daughter. And the pattern goes from like three months to six years and my daughter's four and a half. So I'm gonna knit her the biggest size, but I'd like to do that this summer. There's so many knitting plans I have and there's just not enough time. Right now it's quiet time. So I have like an hour and a half or two hours to get everything I need done. So this was the first thing I was going to do is make this video and post it to YouTube. 
And then I'm going to take pictures for listings um, for my Etsy store, update my social media. I haven't even thought about doing accounting. I probably should do that. Um, not to mention laundry and cleaning. There's there's always stuff to do. And that I think is the biggest challenge of being a parent is, do you, are you productive in the two hours you have or do you relax? Granted, I do relax in the evening. So I try to be as productive as possible. And I'll have a cup of tea because sometimes coffee can keep me awake if I have it, you know, after like noon or 1 p.m. Um, I'm sure my daughter will come in and talk to me uh, at this time. Um, so next week, my plan is to get on here and talk about how to spin the yarn that you want um, because a lot there were a lot of new spinners uh, at the Flagwell and Fiber Festival and I really like to spin a fractal um, style yarn, I suppose, the marled or barber pole look um, because I just think it's beautiful and you can't dye that yarn unless you can't dye a fractal spin unless you uh, spin two separate yarns together. So I love that my spinning wheel can make it. Um, so we'll talk about how to choose the braids um, to get the look that you want or just a braid. It really depends on how much you're looking for. Uh, and that's something that a lot of, I think, designers look at is how can they make a project from just one skein of yarn. Um, yeah, or they'll do like two contrasting colors. And I think that's why there are so many because there's a lot of any dyers and um, variegated yarns and how do you combine those in projects that look good. So I'll do kind of a spinning series, but let me know down below like what kind of content you're looking for. Are you looking for knitting tutorials, crochet tutorials, dyeing tutorials, um, spinning, just talking about life, showing you my whips. Um, if you're not a maker, a whip doesn't is, is not as violent as it sounds. It's a, a work in progress. That was actually really funny because, you know, at, at the flag one, <laughs> fiber festival you assume everyone knows how to knit or crochet or, or knows the lingo and uh, when they don't they're kind of shocked so I'm going to say uh, the weight of yarns and what we call the weight of yarns and so one person came in and I'm like oh you know what kind of yarn do you have and um, I'm looking for thinner yarn and I was like oh well the fingering's over there and he just looked at me like what <laughs> So fingering weight yarn is thin, that's what we use for socks, but when you're not a crafter, like things can sound really bad in our lingo, it just cracks me up. Like if I weren't a teacher, I'd probably have like shirts with stuff like that <laughs> or keychains or stickers or something just, just because I think it's funny, but as a teacher, I don't know if I can do that. But I probably won't edit this video because I don't really like editing, editing videos. As you can tell, I say um a lot. I'm trying to break the habit. My students are working with me on that. I'm looking forward to summer where I can finally be healthy and get rid of this congestion, clean and organize everything, prep everything for this, well, not everything for the school year, but I'm teaching AP literature. So yeah, if you want more talk about how I teach or um, how I plan the school year, or what the heck do teachers do in the summer? Are we working? Are we not working? Answer, most of us are working. Some of us take June off. I always aim to take June off, and then I realize I have way too much work to do. But that's because this year I have a, a new class to teach. I've taught AP Lit before, but it's been about six years. And that was in a different school district. So um, I, I'm limited by what books I have access to here in Flagstaff and what my library has. So I'm just planning and prepping that out. Also, the College Board has changed a little bit, I'm assuming, in six years. Um, like there's the AP classroom, which I didn't have when I taught it initially. So I'm excited to be teaching a new class, prepping it, um, tidying up the curriculum I have, making it better, um, adding things from my professional development so that I can be an even better teacher because you know, that's what life is all about, right? Getting better at things and constantly growing. So yeah, just let me know below in the comments what you'd like to learn, things you'd like me to focus on, because I am here for you and I'm a teacher and I want it to be useful. I don't want to waste anyone's time. But I hope you found this chat valuable or interesting. And if you thought about coming to the Flagwell and Fiber Festival, I hope you'll come next year. And if you have any questions, just 
let me know. Um, you can reach me on Facebook, Instagram, or on my website. And so if you Google Marina Weavino, I will come up and there's many ways to contact me. So I hope you guys have a good weekend and I hope you knit in public too. I'll see you soon.